What's going on everybody? Welcome to another edition of X Creation. Today we're going to be looking at Tool's Prison Sex. And as you can see, I'm playing my 7-string Schecter, not my VGS Evertune guitar. And that's because unlike all the other Tool songs, this one has a different tuning other than drop D. So in this particular tuning, your low E string is now a low B string. And I'm not going to set up my guitar for that, I'm just going to use my 7-string and skip over the B string. And when you check out the tabs that I made for this track, I tabbed it out on a 6-string with your low B. I didn't tab it out as a 7-string. And I'll play it mostly, but sometimes since I have the E string, I'll play parts on the E string, just the same notes in different positions. So, I am playing my Schecter 7-string. I'm running through the Line 6 HD Pro. Um, the amp model is the Solando Crunch. Uh, I feel like it helps really cap the, capture the sound of undertow. It's not a really high gain, in your face kind of distortion. So this is a little subdued and it kind of grabs that nicely. And in front of that I'm actually using the Dead Horse Overdrive pedal from Protone Pedals. And I use that to just shape the sound really. I keep the drive down and it just helps this overall sound go through. So as we jump in, it's a, the song structure is relatively simple, very pop rock, and verse, chorus, verse, chorus, you know, breakdown, solo, outro, but there's a lot of parts for the guitar in, in a squeeze in a four or five minute song, which is pretty impressive, and there's a little variation. So as we get into the beginning of the track, you have the intro riff, and right away you have the intro riff is played three times, and each time is played differently. I play it differently anyway. So the main rhythm that you want to capture first before we do the variation is this. That kind of feel. And the very first time I do. Right, and the hammer on is going to be on your A string, 5 to 7. So I go. Right? And notice the dead notes in there. They'll be in throughout this entire track. It's just something that you know Adam Jones does all the time, so hopefully you're comfortable playing dead notes. Anyway, so here's the first variation. Second time is you're gonna keep that rhythm I mentioned before all the way through, and then add up some 16th notes of dead notes. And then the third time, you just go straight through with the hammer on. Right, and then we descend down. So it's on your, all on your A string, seven, seven, five, five, two, hammer on, open two, open G, open D. So I'll play that intro section for you. And that's the next riff. And here, we're going to be playing octaves. And if you are on a six string, these are going to be adjacent strings because of the tuning. But as I mentioned before, since I'm on the seven string, I'm actually playing a normal octave shape, skipping the E. So it's five, down the three. And then I like to play a dead note here. You can, you can mute. You can mute the three. I like to play a dead note. And just a little simple A power chord, O2. So yeah. Then mute the, the low D, which is the third fret of your B string, and then hammer on open two on your A. And you, that's the riff, you do it four times. Play it slow. All right, and up the speed. Okay, and that's gonna take you right into the verse. Now the verse riff is played eight times, and you're gonna be mixing in some dead notes. So the notes we're gonna be playing on our low B, three, and five, and I've seen people play with a, like, a group of 16th notes, dead notes, and I'm not quite sure how Adam Jones plays it. You can get away with playing those dead notes, but I actually like to play 10 and 12 up top, and you'll hear what I'm saying in a minute. So we have, so that's the first one, so three out. Dead note, and then five. And do a slight gradual bend. So 
So I like to do that, that 10 and 12 up there. I've seen people, you can just do that and get away with it. So whichever one you like better, it sounds like on the album he's doing, could be the bass, who knows. So it's 3 0, oh, dead note 5, open, 10, and then 3 12s. And you can do that eight times, and then you come out of that, you're gonna reverse the octave and go 3 5. So you have 3 5, open. Octave on 10 or just 10. Now you can hear this rhythm again. I when I play that song or I jam the song, I don't do that. I just play the open, but that rhythm's definitely in there. And then you're back into the verse again. And again, the verse is eight times, and then you're gonna repeat this riff again. And then it's just gonna take you into the chorus. And the chorus is just all octaves, and... So you have an octave on B, octave on 10, A, Three, five, three. And in between all those, I'm hitting an open, a muted open, open B. All right? And you're gonna do that three times. And here is an instance on the seventh string where I won't play this octave, open, and it's open two, I'm sorry, two on my A. I'll play the seven of the E string instead of notes the same, but just right, and then you have that little fill, which you're only going to do once this time. Right, so that's your octave B, three times, five, three times, three. So O, oh, five, three, eight, five, three. And those last two notes are just two each. So you have. And you can mute that, or you can just leave it open. The distortion is not overpowering by any means. So sometimes when you mute it like this, it gets really quiet. So you might want to just leave it all open. Later on, you repeat this riff a couple of times, and I'll mute it and then unmute it to kind of help get to the next part. So we have that. Back to that riff. And on the, you're going to do that four times, that particular riff again. And on the fourth time, you're going to add a fill. I like to play... 020 on my D, 020 on my A. I've seen a bunch of different tabs. I've seen that. Typical bluesy type riff. We trill the 3, 2, 3, 2. And that sounds good too. Really, whatever you want to do, it, it doesn't really matter. So, coming out of that. And you're back into the verse riff. And again, the verse riff is eight times through, just like last time. But halfway through, on that fifth time, you're actually going to change a little variation. You're going to go. Basically, you just make it 16th notes. And you can rele release the mute if you want to. Make it a little aggressive sounding, because you only do it once, and then you kind of fall back into your pocket. So it's 3 0 0. Right? Group of 16th notes, and then 3 0. Up to five. Alright, so if I put that in context, that would do. Like that. So 
again, that whole thing is eight times through. Then you're back into the pre-chorus riff, I guess you can call it. All right, and that time you cut it short because you're jumping right back into the. You do that three times, and then you go into the. Now you're in the little chug riff, which is mimics the intro riff. That's how I like to play it. And then hammer on 5-7 on your A and your D string. And then that's a straight repeat of the fill down. 7-5, five, 5-2, five, two, 2. Hammer on an open D string. Except so that time it's on the D string, by the way. <clears throat> and that essentially is going to lead into the solo. I'm sorry, first you repeat that riff four times, and on the fourth time, hang, hang on the two of your, your A string. Step on your delay, because now you're a solo time. And here it's a pretty simple solo. Open B, open E. And then same two strings, 7-7. Seven, seven. Slide down the 5. Slide down the 3. 2 on your G. Pick those two notes quickly. Open B. So I'll play that for you. Next part of the solo, on your D string, you're going to hammer on two to four, and then play four on your B string. And I would let these notes ring out with each other. And then that note, the four on your G string, is going to descend chromatically. So it's going to be four, three, two. And that last time, you're going to drop to the A string and play two. Next part of the solo, you're going to slide up on your G string, hammer on 9 to, t 9 to 11, which are the same notes as down here, and then play 11 and 12. Same, exact same thing, it's just an octave higher. You're going to play 12, 11, 10. And there you're going to bend the uh, ninth fret of your D string. And you can take it a little farther each time, and that's going to take you right to the... I don't know what kind of riff you would call this, what song section you would call it. But when I play live, I like to keep my echo on, or my delay on. So we have power chord shape on your second fret of your A string. So it's 2 4, and then same string on your D string, 2 0. Repeat the 2 4. Two, four, five. Back down to 4, 2 0. And then you're going to repeat the power chord. Then you step up the power chord and then up a, a half step. So the whole section is... And that leads into the last 
variation of the chug riff. And I'm playing that, the note that I'm hitting is five of the D string. You can play 10 of the A string. Kind of like doing that when I play it. So my chug is. leads us to the outro riff. Now this riff has got two guitar, two guitars tracked simultaneously, so what we're going to do is we're going to play the first part of it and then skip and play the, the other guitar part. So, and it's the identical parts just on different strings. So on our low B string, that's our riff, 3 out o, o. I would pull off and then play the open string. And then 5, back to 3 and then 10, 12, 10. And then we're gonna to jump to our B string. Which leads to this little outro solo. <clears throat> and I've seen tabs where people bending on the 12 and 11 or playing 12 on the high string and none of that makes sense to me because that's the note that's being played. So I'm playing 17 on your B string. All right, so I would mimic the rhythm that you played before from the that rhythm. and then start tremolo picking it. You can, now you can add in some other noise there because there's a lot going on, maybe 16. Just to create some extra noise and then release it down quick, slide down. Which leads us into, you can also by the way, pre-bend 16 and then release the pre-bend. Which I like the sound of a lot. I didn't tab it out that way, but I like the sound of that a lot. So, and that's going to lead us to the very outro of the song. Not a whole lot going on here. <clears throat> Playing open B, two of your A string, and then five of your D string. So your rhythm is, so you're going to play it once and then quickly cut it off and play. So play some dead notes. And this is an instance where I usually don't play it down here. I just play the same notes on 7 and 10 on my E and A string. And then, so you do that four times, and then you're just going to play whole notes. You just let them ring out. And here, the, the tempo of the song is slowly decreasing. And you're just going to do that four times. And on the fourth time, play the chord. And then play the, the pinky note, the fifth fret of your D string. And that's it. And that's Prison Sex. I definitely recommend downloading the tabs, listening to the track, and following along. It really helps digest the material and seeing how the tabs are read if you have issues with that. And that's about it. So, until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.